Welcome back to our channel dedicated to exploring the depths of human behavior and the wisdom of ancient philosophies. Feeling a little stress lately? Overwhelmed by the constant noise and drama of the world? Yeah, us too. That's why today, we're taking a deep dive into something truly transformative, Stoicism. Now, this ancient Greek philosophy had sound a little dusty at first, but trust us, it's packed with practical wisdom that can seriously upgrade your life. Think about it. Wouldn't it be amazing to cultivate rock-solid inner peace, even when things get crazy? To make clear-headed decisions instead of getting swept away by emotions, Stoicism is all about that. It's about building mental resilience, living with purpose, and finding happiness in the midst of chaos. Sounds pretty good, right? But the path to Stoicism isn't always a walk in the park. There are some folks you might meet along the way who could unintentionally disrupt your journey. We're talking about the chronic complainer who sucks the joy out of any room, the impulsive reactor who explodes before thinking things through, and even the seemingly harmless pleasure seeker who's always chasing the next thrill. Now, Stoicism doesn't say to ditch these people entirely. But understanding how their behaviours can affect you is key. By recognising these personality types and their potential pitfalls, we can navigate our social interactions with more awareness. Think of it like learning to identify different plants on a hike. Some are beautiful and fragrant, while others might give you a nasty rash. Knowledge is power, folks. So, join us on this adventure as we explore the seven personality types Stoicism warns us about. By understanding these folks and their influence, we can chart a course towards a life of meaning, integrity, and most importantly, inner peace. Let's get stoic together. Imagine scrolling through life on easy mode, constantly chasing the next dopamine hit. That's the world of the hedonist, according to Stoicism. For these folks, pleasure is the ultimate goal, a never-ending buffet where they pile on fleeting joys without a second thought. This relentless pursuit, however, often backfires spectacularly. Think of it like a sugar crash after a giant candy binge. The initial rush fades, leaving you feeling hollow and potentially with a headache or a metaphorical equivalent. Stoicism throws a wrench into this hedonistic free-for-all. It doesn't demonize pleasure entirely, but it highlights the dangers of prioritizing fleeting thrills over long-term fulfillment. The hedonist, fueled by instant gratification, often struggles with self-control. Their impulses become their captain, steering them towards quick fixes and away from building a life of substance. It's like constantly hitting the snooze button on your alarm. You might get a few extra minutes of sleep, but you'll eventually miss your goals entirely. But the real kicker, this relentless pursuit of pleasure actually blinds the hedonist to the deeper wellsprings of happiness. Stoicism argues that true satisfaction comes from living a life of virtue, guided by reason and aligned with our core values. Think of it like building a sturdy house. It takes time, effort, and the right materials. The hedonist, on the other hand, is content with building a sand castle on the beach, enjoyable for a fleeting moment, but easily washed away by the tide of life's challenges. In the bustling marketplace of Ephesus, amidst the cacophony of shouts and haggling, lived a young Stoic named Marcus. He shared a humble dwelling with his friend, Caius, a man known for his insatiable appetite for pleasure. Caius, a talented musician, spent his days serenading wealthy patrons in exchange for lavish feasts and exotic wines. Each evening, he returned to their shared quarters, boasting of his exploits and the newest indulgence he'd procured. One day, Caius arrived with a peculiar contraption, 
a gilded bird cage. Its occupant a rare, brightly colored songbird. This beauty will fill our home with joy, Caius exclaimed, placing the cage on the table. The bird, startled by the journey, chirped frantically. Marcus, ever the pragmatist, observed, a lovely creature, Caius, but a finicky one. These birds require special care and delicate foods. Are you prepared for such a responsibility? Caius scoffed. Pleasure should not be burdened by worries, he replied. He spent the next few days lavishing attention on the bird, providing it with the finest seeds and fruits. The bird sang incessantly, its melody a vibrant addition to their home. Caius reveled in its presence, bragging to his friends about his new possession. However, as days turned into weeks, the novelty wore off. The constant chirping became tiresome, and the exotic seeds grew expensive. Caius, his initial enthusiasm waning, began neglecting the bird's care. He left the cage uncleaned and resorted to offering scraps from his own meals. The once vibrant songbird grew listless, its feathers dull, and its song a mere croak. Seeing this, Marcus approached Caius one evening. Look at the bird, he said gently. Once a source of joy, now a reflection of neglect. Pleasure without responsibility leads only to suffering, both for the object of your desire and yourself. Caius looked at the once beautiful creature, shame creeping into his eyes. He realized Marcus was right. The pursuit of fleeting pleasure had caused him to overlook the bird's needs and ultimately diminish its well-being. The next day, Caius took the cage to a merchant specializing in exotic birds. He explained his predicament and found a new owner who could provide the proper care. As he walked away from the marketplace, Caius felt a sense of relief. He had learned a valuable lesson. True enjoyment comes from a balance between indulging in pleasures and fulfilling responsibilities. Returning home, he found Marcus tending their small vegetable garden. Perhaps, Caius suggested, we could use some of these herbs to create a new melody. Marcus smiled. Now that, he said, sounds like a worthwhile pursuit. So, Stoicism encourages us to be discerning pleasure seekers. Enjoy the good stuff, for sure, but don't let it become your sole compass. Cultivate self-control, prioritize long-term goals, and seek fulfillment that aligns with your values. By doing so, you can transcend the fleeting pleasures of the hedonist and navigate towards a life that's not only enjoyable, but also meaningful and enduring. It's about finding the sweet spot between indulging in life's delights and building a foundation for lasting happiness. In the grand tapestry of life, Stoicism encourages us to be discerning weavers. We thread together experiences, scrutinize assumptions, and strive to see the world with clear eyes. Critical thinking is our loom, skepticism a valuable tool. But beware the tangled yarn of cynicism, for it represents a character Stoicism warns against, the cynic. Picture your perpetually grumpy uncle, the one who scoffs at every silver lining. Lost his keys, society's a sham, neighbor wins the lottery. Just another example of the rigged system. The cynic's doubt isn't a healthy questioning. It's a preordained pessimism. The world becomes a stage play of perpetual villainy, where everyone's a conniving extra. This distorted lens isolates them, a self-fulfilling prophecy pushing them deeper into their cynical haven. Healthy skepticism, on the other hand, fuels curiosity and exploration. It compels us to ask why and seek diverse perspectives. The cynic, however, throws the why question out the window, opting for the cynical blanket statement of everything's rotten. Their rejection of social norms isn't a quest for improvement, but a dismissal based on the belief 
that all norms are inherently corrupt. This constant negativity builds walls instead of bridges. Imagine trying to have a meaningful conversation with someone convinced you're lying before you even utter a word. Not exactly a recipe for positive change. Stoicism, therefore, presents the cynic as a cautionary tale. Questioning is vital, absolutely. But there's a vast gulf between asking, is this the best approach? And assuming there is no good approach at all. Stoicism guides us towards a balanced path, where skepticism is tempered by a willingness to see the potential for both good and bad. We engage in constructive dialogue, seeking understanding even when we disagree. It's about weaving a nuanced tapestry of the world, appreciating its intricate patterns without getting lost in the darker threads. We may hear about the story of Marcus, a young man living in Athens during the golden age of Stoicism. Marcus was known for his insatiable pursuit of pleasure, seeking instant gratification at every turn. He frequented lavish banquets, indulged in excess, and surrounded himself with fleeting pleasures, believing that such experiences were the key to happiness. Despite his outward display of merriment, Marcus found himself increasingly discontented and unfulfilled. Each fleeting pleasure left him craving more, trapped in a cycle of temporary highs followed by inevitable lows. His friends, followers of Stoic philosophy, attempted to enlighten him to the dangers of his hedonistic lifestyle. But Marcus remained obstinate, convinced that true happiness lay in the pursuit of pleasure. However, Marcus's worldview was challenged when he encountered a Stoic philosopher named Alexander. Alexander lived a modest life, free from the trappings of excess and extravagance. He possessed an inner peace and contentment that Marcus found both perplexing and intriguing. Intrigued by Alexander's serene demeanor amidst life's challenges, Marcus sought guidance from the philosopher. Under Alexander's mentorship, Marcus began to embrace the principles of Stoicism, gradually shifting his focus from the pursuit of fleeting pleasures to the cultivation of inner virtue and lasting fulfillment. He learned to temper his desires, to appreciate the beauty of simplicity, and to find joy in the present moment rather than constantly chasing after future gratification. Over time, Marcus underwent a profound transformation. He discovered that true happiness was not found in the accumulation of material possessions or the pursuit of momentary pleasures, but in the cultivation of wisdom, resilience, and inner peace. Embracing the Stoic teachings, Marcus found a newfound sense of purpose and fulfillment, transcending the allure of short-term gratification in favor of a life rich in meaning and virtue. Ultimately, Stoicism is a philosophy of measured perspective. By blending skepticism with empathy and the thirst for knowledge, we navigate life's complexities with wisdom and integrity. We become not just discerning weavers, but also active participants in the tapestry actively seeking ways to incorporate the various threads into a more beautiful and complete picture. Picture a group project, a diverse team working on a presentation. There's Sarah, the ideas machine, constantly brimming with innovative concepts. But Sarah also has a tendency to dominate conversations, steamrolling over other suggestions with a my way or the highway attitude. This is the egotist in action, someone whose inflated sense of self can derail teamwork and create a toxic environment. Stoicism throws a wrench into this self-centered approach. It doesn't advocate for shrinking violets, it encourages confidence in your abilities. However, excessive egotism often manifests as arrogance. The egotist walks around with a permanent better-than-thou aura, 
dismissing the achievements and opinions of others. They might be the first to volunteer for tasks, but only if it allows them to hog the spotlight. Collaboration, more like a one-person show with a supporting cast of extras, all in the egotist's mind. This arrogance breeds entitlement. The egotist believes they deserve special treatment, exempt from the rules that apply to everyone else. They're the ones who cut in line at the coffee shop, convinced their time is more valuable. This behavior not only creates friction, but also hinders progress. How can you build something great together if nobody wants to work with you? In the bustling city of Ephesus lived a talented sculptors, Marcus and Agathon. Marcus, a stoic practitioner, was known for his meticulous work and collaborative spirit. Agathon, on the other hand, possessed a dazzling talent, but was consumed by an insatiable ego. One day, a wealthy merchant, Tiberius, commissioned a grand statue to adorn his newly built villa. He interviewed several sculptors, and his eyes fell upon Marcus and Agathon. Impressed by their contrasting styles, Tiberius made a bold proposition. Create a single statue together, one that combines your unique talents. Marcus, ever the team player, readily agreed. Agathon, however, hesitated. The idea of sharing the spotlight chafed at his ego. He eventually relented, convinced his superior skill would overshadow Marcus's contribution. As they began work, the tension was palpable. Agathon dominated the project, sculpting the figure's imposing musculature with an arrogant flourish. He dismissed Marcus's suggestions regarding the intricate details of the clothing and expression. One day, Marcus arrived at the studio to find Agathon putting the finishing touches on the statue's face, a cold, emotionless mask, Agathon. Marcus said gently, the figure lacks humanity. A great statue needs not just strength, but also soul, Agathon scarfed. True artistry lies in the grand gesture, not the insignificant details, he retorted. Frustrated but determined, Marcus carved a small clay model depicting a single, expressive hand reaching out in a gesture of offering. He presented it to Agathon, explaining, sometimes the smallest detail can speak volumes. Agathon, initially dismissive, found himself captivated by the quiet power of the hand. Shamefaced, he acknowledged his oversight. Together, they incorporated the hand into the sculpture, transforming the cold warrior into a figure of strength and compassion. When the statue was unveiled at Tiberius's villa, it drew gasps of awe. The combined power of Marcus's meticulous detail and Agathon's bold strokes created a masterpiece. Tiberius, impressed by their teamwork, praised them both equally. Agathon, humbled by the experience, finally understood the limitations of his ego. He realized that true artistry wasn't about self-glorification, but about collaboration and the power of a shared vision. From that day on, Marcus and Agathon became not just colleagues, but friends, their contrasting styles complementing each other in future masterpieces. Their story became a testament to the stoic principle that true success often lies in recognizing the value of others and working together for a common goal. The real danger of the egotist's worldview lies in its erosion of empathy. By constantly focusing on themselves, they struggle to understand the needs and perspectives of others. They might talk for hours about their problems, but glaze over when someone else tries to share theirs. This lack of empathy weakens relationships and fosters a sense of isolation. Imagine trying to connect with someone who only sees the world through the lens of me, 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 
not exactly a recipe for deep and meaningful connections. Stoicism encourages a we-over-me mentality. It's okay to be confident in your abilities, but genuine success requires acknowledging the value of others. It's about fostering an us-versus-them mentality, where everyone works together towards a common goal. By practicing empathy and recognizing the contributions of others, we can build strong relationships and navigate life's challenges with a united front. After all, even the most talented musician, a band to create a beautiful symphony. Ever find yourself feeling like you're the hapless target in a cosmic game of whack-a-mole, constantly getting knocked down by life's relentless barrage? You're not alone. It's all too easy to slip into the clutches of the victim mentality a mindset that paints us as powerless bystanders in a world stacked against us. However, Stoicism beckons us to embrace a different perspective, one that empowers us to shed the victimhood cloak and reclaim agency over our own lives. Picture this, you oversleep, miss the bus, and clumsily spill coffee all over your shirt. It's the quintessential everything's going wrong scenario, isn't it? The victim mentality would seize upon this unfortunate chain of events like a relentless storm cloud, replaying the morning's mishaps on an endless loop. It fosters a sense of resentment towards the universe, weighing us down with a heavy burden of negativity that stifles any motivation to improve our circumstances. Stoicism, however, urges us to pause, take a deep breath, and redirect our focus. Instead of fixating on the spilled coffee or the mist bus, Stoicism prompts us to acknowledge these setbacks with a simple okay that happened before pivoting our attention to what we can control. Perhaps it's reaching out to a friend for a lift or swapping out the stained shirt for a fresh one. The crux lies in recognizing that while we may not wield power over external events, we do hold sway over our reactions and subsequent actions. It's about reframing the narrative from why is this happening to me to what can I do about it. Moreover, the victim mentality thrives on the blame game, eagerly pointing fingers at external factors like traffic jams, tardy colleagues, or the whims of fate. This perpetual cycle of finger-pointing absolves the victim of any personal responsibility, impeding their growth and resilience. Stoicism, however, advocates for a different approach, an approach grounded in accountability. While not everything is within our sphere of control, acknowledging our role and shaping our reality is pivotal. Did we set a realistic alarm? Did we effectively communicate with our colleague? By embracing ownership of our actions, we equip ourselves with the agency to effect positive change. It's not about dwelling in guilt, but rather about understanding how our choices influence our outcomes. Ultimately, Stoicism implores us to transcend the confines of victimhood and reclaim our position as captains of our own destinies. It beckons us to recognize the inherent power we possess to navigate life's challenges, make conscious choices, and shape our own experiences. While we may not dictate the whims of the weather or the unpredictability of traffic, we do hold sway over our responses and subsequent actions. By cultivating a proactive mindset, nurturing resilience, and embracing accountability for our choices, we can metamorphose from passive victims into empowered individuals ready to confront life's inevitable hurdles with a renewed sense of purpose and agency. Not how long, but how well you have lived is the main thing, Seneca. This quote hung above Marcus' desk, a constant reminder in the whirlwind of his advertising career. Deadlines loomed, clients demanded revisions, and the pressure to churn out catchy slogans felt relentless. One day, amidst the chaos, 
a particularly demanding client called. Marcus, the voice boomed through the phone. We need that new campaign by tomorrow. Pull an all-nighter, whatever it takes, Marcus felt a familiar surge of adrenaline. He thrived on pressure, often pushing himself to the limit, fueled by caffeine and instant ramen. But lately, that familiar thrill had begun to feel hollow. The long nights were taking their toll, and the success he achieved felt fleeting, washed away by the next deadline. That evening, staring at the blinking cursor on his screen, a different thought flickered in his mind. Not how long, but how well you have lived dot 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 Seneca's words echoed. Was this relentless pursuit of deadlines, this constant state of barely controlled chaos, leading him to a life well lived? Marcus pictured his colleague, Sarah. Unlike him, Sarah wasn't a slave to deadlines. She approached her work with a calm focus, prioritizing quality over speed. She left the office at a decent hour, leaving time for her hobbies and a healthy social life. Yet, her work consistently impressed, a testament to her thoughtful approach. Suddenly, the blinking cursor didn't feel so daunting. Marcus closed his laptop, a newfound resolve settling within him. He wouldn't pull an all-nighter. He'd call the client, explain the need for more time, and suggest a more creative approach. It might not be the fast and furious pace he was used to, but it aligned better with his values, quality, sustainability, and maybe even a life outside the office walls. The next day, the client, initially surprised, was receptive to Marcus's plan. The campaign, completed with thoughtful consideration, ended up being a huge success. Marcus, for the first time in a long time, felt a genuine sense of accomplishment. It wasn't just about the finished product, but about the process, the mindful effort, the focus on quality, and the prioritization of his well-being. He realized that true success, as Seneca suggested, wasn't measured by the number of all-nighters he pulled, but by the quality of life he built along the way. From then on, Marcus kept Seneca's words close, a constant reminder to prioritize intentionality over impulsivity, and to strive for a life well lived, not just a life lived fast. Consider the tale of Alex, a young professional driven by ambition and the pursuit of success. In his relentless quest for material wealth and status, Alex dedicated countless hours to climbing the corporate ladder, amassing possessions, and cultivating an image of prosperity. However, despite his outward achievements, Alex found himself increasingly disillusioned and unfulfilled. One day, while attending a lavish networking event filled with affluent individuals adorned in designer attire, Alex had an epiphany. As he observed the superficial interactions and conspicuous displays of wealth around him, he realized the emptiness of his pursuits. Despite outward appearances of success, many attendees seemed devoid of genuine joy and fulfillment. Reflecting on his own life, Alex recognized the profound impact of Stoic philosophy. He began to reassess his priorities, shifting his focus from external validation to inner peace and authentic connections. Inspired by Stoic teachings, Alex embarked on a journey of self-discovery, seeking fulfillment through meaningful experiences and nurturing genuine relationships. Over time, Alex's perspective underwent a profound transformation. No longer driven solely by the pursuit of material wealth, he found joy in simple pleasures and meaningful interactions. By embracing stoic principles and prioritizing inner fulfillment over external validation, Alex discovered a newfound sense of contentment and purpose in his life. Imagine navigating a crowded social gathering you weave through conversations, some light and breezy, others a little suffocating. Then you spot them, 
the materialist. Their eyes constantly scan the room, not for genuine connections, but for status symbols. The conversation, if you can snag their attention, inevitably steers towards their latest acquisition, a bigger house, a flashier car, an exotic vacation. Stoicism, with its ancient wisdom, offers a different approach to navigating life's social labyrinth, one that steers clear of the dead end of materialism. The materialist lives and breathes acquisition. Their life story is a relentless shopping spree, a constant chase for the next shiny object. They believe happiness can be bought, that a bigger house or a more expensive car will somehow fill the void inside. But Stoicism offers a sobering truth, true fulfillment doesn't come with a price tag. Stoicism isn't about living a life of deprivation, it's about finding balance. A nice car is great for getting you places, but it won't bring you lasting joy. A big house is comfortable, but it won't build strong relationships. Stoicism encourages us to focus on the things that truly matter, living a life of virtue, acting with integrity, and fostering meaningful connections with the people around us. Here's the trap with materialism. The more you acquire, the emptier you feel. The materialist, constantly chasing the next big thing, never feels satisfied. It's like pouring water into a bucket with a hole in the bottom. The emptiness remains. Stoicism helps us see this cycle for what it is, a never-ending chase for a mirage. Stoicism offers a compass, guiding us towards a life rich in meaning and purpose. It prioritizes inner peace, acting with integrity, and building genuine relationships. It encourages us to break free from the chains of consumerism and live a life that's truly fulfilling. It's about looking beyond the surface and appreciating the things that money can't buy, love, laughter, and a sense of purpose that transcends the latest trends. So, the next time you find yourself at a social gathering, don't get caught up in the materialistic chatter. Remember, true happiness lies not in what you own, but in who you are and the connections you build. Standing in stark opposition to Stoicism is the philosophy of the fatalist. While Stoicism emphasizes personal responsibility and navigating the world with reason and virtue, the fatalist adopts a more passive stance. They believe that external forces, often referred to as fate or destiny, hold complete control over their lives, dictating every outcome. This unwavering conviction in an external locus of control breeds a sense of resignation. The fatalist might view challenges and setbacks as inevitable, surrendering to circumstances without a fight. This resignation can easily morph into apathy. When individuals relinquish their sense of agency, they lose the motivation to invest effort or emotion in their actions. Believing their struggles are predetermined removes the impetus to strive for improvement or pursue goals. The world around them becomes a mere stage where they play a preordained role, a spectator rather than an active participant. Furthermore, a fatalistic outlook can cripple a person's sense of agency. Agency refers to the belief that we have the power to make choices and influence our surroundings. The fatalist, convinced their path is fixed, loses sight of this inherent power. They might neglect opportunities or fail to take responsibility for their actions, blaming fate for their shortcomings or misfortunes. This absolves them of accountability and hinders their ability to learn and grow from experiences. Stoicism, in sharp contrast, empowers individuals it acknowledges that certain aspects of life lie outside our control. However, 
It emphasizes the importance of focusing on the areas we can influence, our thoughts, actions, and reactions. By applying reason and virtue, Stoics believe we can navigate the world's uncertainties with resilience and integrity. In essence, Stoicism equips us with the tools to become the authors of our own narratives. The fatalist, on the other hand, remains a character scripted by fate, forever confined to the sidelines. Stoicism, with its emphasis on personal responsibility and proactive engagement with the world, offers a far more empowering and fulfilling approach to life's inevitable challenges. Now, remember, Stoicism isn't about social isolation or building walls around yourself. These people we discuss can be colleagues, family members, even acquaintances. Avoiding them entirely might not always be realistic. The key takeaway is awareness. By recognizing these draining personalities, you can equip yourself to navigate interactions with them effectively. There are some things what can happen if you don't avoid these draining personalities, according to Stoicism. Erosion of your values, constant exposure to negativity can chip away at your own Stoic principles. The complainer's negativity might become your negativity. The gossip's drama might become your own. Diminished resilience. Surrounding yourself with those who lack resilience can weaken your own ability to bounce back from challenges. Their negativity becomes a constant undercurrent, making it harder to maintain a positive outlook in the face of difficulties. Wasted energy. Engaging with negativity is a drain on your mental and emotional resources. The energy you could be channeling towards pursuing your goals or cultivating inner peace gets siphoned off by negativity. Compromised decision-making. The constant negativity and gossip of others can cloud your judgment. You might find yourself making decisions based on fear or negativity instead of reason and stoic principles. Missed opportunities for growth. The negativity of others can be a distraction, preventing you from focusing on your own self-improvement. You might miss opportunities to learn from your experiences or develop your stoic virtues. A cycle of negativity. Negativity breeds negativity. By constantly engaging with these personalities, you risk becoming part of the problem, perpetuating a cycle of negativity that can be difficult to escape. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what we can control, our own thoughts, reactions, and actions. When faced with a chronic complainer, don't get sucked into the negativity vortex. Acknowledge their frustrations, but gently steer the conversation towards solutions. With a flatterer, recognize their insincerity and deflect their praise with humor, or by redirecting the conversation to your team's accomplishments. Ultimately, these challenging individuals can serve as opportunities for your own growth. Their negativity can be a reminder to cultivate gratitude for the positive aspects of your life. Their drama can strengthen your resolve to stay calm and collected. By approaching these interactions with stoic principles, you can not only protect your own well-being, but also model a more resilient and virtuous way of being in the world. So, while avoiding these personalities, when possible is wise, remember, Sometimes the greatest lessons come from the most challenging encounters.